Hello, my yogi friends. Welcome to your Ashtanga short form. With me, Kelsey. I'm missing you guys on Tuesdays. Hopefully, we'll be back together on our mats very shortly. But until then, we always have our practice. Always. So come to the top of your mat. Face the big toes touching if you can. Stand up nice and tall. Arms down by the sides. All the palms facing forward. Take a moment, set an intention for your practice. Get grounded. Get calm. Starting to tune inward, blocking out any external distractions. Let's own together. Bring your hands to your heart. Inhale. And just like we always do, we will begin with five Surya Namaskar A's, three Surya Namaskar B's. Move with me or at your own pace. Inhale, lift the arms, touch palms, and look up. Exhale, fold, hands come to the mat or your shins. Inhale, glance up. Exhale, step back, top of the push up, using the knees this first time through, elbows bend in, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra or upward facing. Exhale, downward facing. Five breaths in our downward facing dog. Two more. As you inhale, glance up, exhale, nice and easy step to the top of your mat. Inhale to that halfway lift, exhale, Uttanasana, fold in. Inhale, rise all the way up, look up. And exhale, Samasthiti, four more, inhale. Exhale, fold. Inhale, Ardha. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing. Five breaths. Let the spine and the neck be nice and long. Arms are strong as we push the floor away. Low belly scoops, legs are engaged. Inhale as you glance up. Exhale, make your way to the top of your mat. Inhale, half lift, exhale, fold. Inhale, rise all the way up. Exhale, so I'm gonna speak to heat three more. Inhale, lift the arms and the eyes. Exhale, fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha. Exhale, send the feet back, Chaturanga. Inhale, Urva Pushmanasana. Exhale, Adam Pushmanasana. Dushi is towards the navel, or if that's too much, just pass the tip of the nose. Engage the kneecaps. Lift the pelvic floor, scoop the low belly. Last breath. Inhale, look up, exhale, come to the top of your mat. Inhale, long spine, exhale, fold it in. Inhale, rise. Exhale, samasthiti. Two more, inhale, lift the arms with the eyes. Exhale, fold over your legs, pull your low belly in. Inhale, lift your heart. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, Urva Mukha Svanasana. Exhale, Adam Mukha Svanasana. If you haven't already, begin to activate that Ujjayi breathing. In and out through the nose. The lips are together, but the teeth are gently parted. Let that breath roll over the back of your throat, making that H-like fogging up glass quality. The 
feet up. Make your way to the top of your mat. Inhale, Ardha. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise all the way up. Exhale, send the seat to hand one more time. Sun A, Sereno Scar A. Fold. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale, lift your heart, long legs, squeeze your glutes. Exhale, downward facing dog. Wrap your triceps down as they push towards the floor. Two more breaths. Glance up. Exhale as you make your way to the top of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise. Exhale, some sweet tea. And we begin three sorry, no star bees. Bend the knees, at the hips back. Inhale, Uttanasana. Exhale, straighten the legs, Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward forward facing. Warrior one, pivot the left heel flat, step the right foot forward. Rise, exhale, hands come down, step back, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing, exhale, downward facing. Now pivot the right foot flat, step the left foot forward. Inhale, rise up, exhale, hands come down, step back, chaturanga. Inhale, peel your heart open, exhale, send the hips up and back. And breathe. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold it in. Bend the knees, sit the hips back. Chair pose. Exhale, some speed to heat. Two more. Chair. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up facing. Exhale, downward facing. Vira A, right side, step up. Inhaling. Exhaling all the way down. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing. Pivot the right heel flat. Vira A. Left side. Exhale, all the way down and back. Inhale, lift your heart. Exhale, spill your hips up and back. And breathe. Inhale, glance up, exhale, make your way to the top of your mat, inhale, half lift, exhale, fold, bend the knees, sit the hips back, bending in chair, Uttanasana, exhale, Samasthiti. One more time, bend the knees, sit the hips back, exhale, straighten the legs and fold. Inhale, Ardha, exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing right side, warrior one. Rise up. Exhale, hands come down. Chaturanga. Inhale, Urva Mukha. Exhale, Adha Mukha. Left side, warrior one. Exhale, hands come down, step back. Chaturanga. Inhale, Urva Mukha. Exhale, Adha Mukha.
Inhale, peek up, exhale, step, jump, or float. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold it in, keep that length. Ending in Utkatasana. Exhale, Samasthi. Tap the feet, hips width. Remember, only about two fists worth. Bend down, hook the big toes with the first two fingers, yogi toe hold. Inhale, straighten the arms in the back. And exhale, fold it in. Reach down with the crown of the head. Shoulders are away from the ears. Let the elbows come in by the legs. Inhale, half lift. Put a half sasana, slide your hands underneath your feet. Stepping into the palms of your hands, inhale, halfway lift, get long. And exhale, fold it in. And again, you want to try to bring the elbows in back by the legs. This creates more space for the neck and the shoulders. And then start that shift forward into the arches of the feet, out of the heels, low belly scooping. Legs engaged. Inhale, half lift. Slide your hands up underneath your feet. Exhale. Inhale, rise all the way up. And hop back to some seat. Uttita Chakonasana, inhale, step open to the right. Feet start parallel, then turn the right foot out, left foot stays in. Arms open to a T, inhale, get long. Exhale, shift to the right side. And then reach down and hook the big toe with the first two fingers. If you can't reach the big toe, rest your hand on your shin or a block. Legs are very strong and engaged here. Once you have the big toe, pull against it with the right hand so you can really reach into the top hand. Shoulder blades down, heart rolls open. Legs down, inhale, rise up through center. Switch your feet exactly. Inhale, and exhale, find the second side. Really strong Uriyana Bandha here. So suck your low belly up and in. Really strong, active legs. So don't put any weight into that left hand. The legs are doing the work here. Last breath. Inhale, rise up through center. And then let her be. Turn all the way to the back of your mat. This time, left hand down, right arm reaches. You can get your hand on the outside of your foot, pinky toe side, that's where we're going. But you could always rest your hand on the top of the foot, use a block, or even the big toe side if that's where you're at, that's okay. Low belly scoops, torso is long, Drishti is Urva upward. My helpers. Lands down. Inhale, rise up through center. Second side. Now the right hand is down. Left arm reaches. Low belly sucks in. Hips are squared to the front of the mat. And still legs are really, really active here. Squeezing towards each other. Muscles hugging the bones. Sorry, I had a bit of a headache this morning, trying to work out any kinks in my neck I have. Yep, it's perfect for that. Glance down, inhale, rise up through center. Exhale, Samasthiti. Uttita Parshvokanasana. Inhale, step open to the right feet a bit wider this time. Turn the right toes all the way to the back. Arms open to a T, then bend that right knee deeply. And either right elbow can come to the right knee, or maybe the right hand comes all the way to the floor. You can get in the pinky toe side of the foot. That's where we're working towards. You can use a block. You can come to the inner side of the foot. 
And then reach that left arm up and over. Thumb up, pinky down. Right glutes tuck underneath you. Drishti is Urva, upward. Hands down, inhale, rise up through center. Turn the right foot in, left foot turns out, and the left side. Really think of that stretching the entire right side of the body. So it's called extended side angle. We really want to get that stretch through the whole right side of the body right now. Shoulder blades are down, chest rolls open, and we roll that left knee open from high on the inner thigh. Rise up through center, letter B. Turn all the way to the back of your mat. Lower the back knee, no Lucy, no. Then the left elbow comes to the outside of the right knee. And maybe this is your twist, or maybe you take it a little deeper. You can get the shoulder to the outside of the knee, go Lucy. Pivot the back heel flat. Reach the right arm up and over the head, unless the hands are at prayer, and then you keep them at your chest. Bundas are very active. Breath is deep, though it's hard in these twists. Glance down. Inhale as you rise through center. And exhale, second side. Now we're facing the front of the mat. Lower the back knee. Right elbow to the left knee. And there's your twist. Or maybe you take it a little deeper, lift the back knee. And maybe the right shoulder slides to the outside of the left knee and the left arm reaches. Lands down. Inhale, rise up through center. Exhale, right foot joins left, some CT. Prasarita Padottanasana, inhale, step over to the right. Feet stay parallel, not quite so wide. Hands are on the hips. Inhale, get long, and exhale, fold over wide legs. Bring your hands flat to the mat. Inhale, half lift, exhale, fold it in. So we really want to keep the palms flat here. If the arms bend quite deeply, make sure the elbows squeeze in towards each other. Kneecaps are lifting, low belly is scooped, and we press right to the center of the ankles here, letter A. Inhale, half lift, exhale, inhale as you bring your hands to your hips, and rise up the rest of the way. Letter B, inhale, open the arms to a T, and then bring them to your hips. Bring your chest up as you lengthen, exhale, fold. Now keep squeezing the elbows towards each other behind your back, your shoulder blades squeeze. And still we reach with the crown of the head, finding length through the spine, through the torso. Your she's past the tip of the nose. It's natural to want to slide your hands to your low back, resist that urge, keep them on your hips but keep squeezing. Press through your feet, inhale, rise all the way up. Exhale, look forward to avoid any dizziness. Take an extra moment if you do get dizzy. And then inhale, open the arms to a T, letter C. Swim them around behind your back, interlacing your hands. Get long and exhale, fold. And let your hands fall away from your glutes. And let your shoulders naturally release. Press through your feet. Inhale, rise all the way up. Exhale. 
exhale to avoid any dizziness. Bring the hands to the hips, letter D. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, reach down. Hook the big toes with the first two fingers in that yogi toe hold. Inhale, straighten the arms in the back. And exhale, fold them. And then use the strength of your arms once you found your fold to pull yourself in a little deeper. If it's too easy to get your head to the floor, walk your feet in a little closer to each other. Find a little bit more length through the spine. Try to keep the legs straight if you can, but if you gotta bend the knees, that's all right. Your yoga journey takes time. We don't wanna rush it. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, the hands come to the hips. Inhale, rise up all the way. And exhale, Samasiti. Parsvottanasana, swim your arms around behind your back. Either taking the prayer hands, or you could grab opposite elbow, or press your fists together. Then as you inhale, step open to the right. Right toes turn all the way to the back of the mat. Left toes turn in a bit, so we're heel to heel in stance. Inhale, get long. And exhale, fold over your right leg. Right hip comes back. So that the left hip can come forward, squaring our hips towards the back of our mat. And we're thinking chin towards shin here. So pull that right femur bone back deeply. Low belly scoops. Feel that stretching between your mat as you squeeze your legs towards that midline plane to help with any balance issues. Press through your feet. Inhale as you rise. Exhale, switch sides. Now we're facing the front of our mat. Inhale, exhale, fold over your left leg. Now pull that left hip back so the right hip can come forward. Chin toward chin. And if you have prayer hands, think of pressing the palms of the hands together. Let the elbows lift so that you activate the arms, lift the shoulders. Keep breathing. Inhale, rise all the way up. Exhale, Samasvitihi. Prepare for the balancing postures. Step the feet hips width. Left hand comes to the left hip. Right arm reaches straight out in front of you. As you inhale, let the right leg float up to meet the first two fingers in that yogi toe hold. If that's not accessible, you can always grab the knee. If you have that big toe, pull the right femur bone back, bow over that leg, again, chin towards shin. Inhale, rise up through center. Letter B, as you pivot open, right leg opens to the right, Drishti gently shifts to the left, and stay balanced. If you fall, you fall, you just come back. One more breath. Inhale, come back through center. Let her see if you have the legs straight, you bow over it. And then everybody, both hands on hips, keep that right leg lifted, point the toes, pulling that femur bone back and in and slightly internally rotating. Stand up nice and tall. Two more breaths. You're almost there. Last one. Lift an inch or straighten the leg. Exhale, lower it down. Prepare for the second side. Reach the left hand out in front of you. And either float the big toe or the knee up to meet the hand. Have the leg straight, we bow. Feel that natural push-pull as the big toe pushes into the hand and the arm gives strength of pulling that leg back in. One more breath. Inhale as you rise up. And let her be pivot open. Leg to the left. Drishti towards the right. Good 
pelvic floor lifted, low belly engaged. Inhale, come back through center. The leg is straight, you bow for letter C. And then everyone, both hands on hips, left leg reaches. Doesn't matter if it's just an inch or two off the floor or a foot or two. We work where we are. One more breath, lift it up an inch, straighten the leg. Exhale, lower it down, samastiti. Arabhata Padmasanasana, second of the balancing postures. So if you work in half lotus, please take them with the right leg. If that's not in your practice, you can always take that half chair pose. That would be perfect. You could take tree pose. Or like I said, if we're working in half lotus, take it with the right leg. What we want to do is reach around with the right hand, grab the right foot. If you can do that, then you can fold over the left leg. If you can't get the right hand to the right foot, that's okay. Stay upright. Let the left hand grab the right foot and the right hand grab the left elbow. And focus on the external hip rotation and the balance without the fold. If you're folding, Ribs reach over that lotus foot. Crown reaches towards the ground. If you're folded, inhale, halfway lift, exhale. Inhale, rise all the way up, try to keep the bind. Whoop. And everybody exhale, release that right leg. A little harder while talking. All right, second side. Find that lotus leg on the second, on the left leg. Always remember to close that knee joint first. So remember, you can always work in that half one-legged chair pose or your tree pose or your half lotus leg is the priority and you just stay standing. No worries. Be where you are. The evolution of this practice for you will come in tiny steps and stages. Nothing transforms overnight. So be patient with yourself. One more breath. Inhale, halfway lift if you're folded. Exhale here. Strong leg, inhale, rise all the way up. Keep the bind. And exhale, release a leg down, everybody. So let's speak to he. Let's vinyasa. Inhale, lift the arms. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, send the feet back, chaturanga. Inhale, urdhva mukha. Exhale, Adamukha. We're going to come to the top of our mats for Utkatasana. Feel free to jump right into that or nice and easy, step your feet together between your hands. Big toes touch. Bend the knees, sit back. And inhale, chair. Utkatasana. Palms touch. Arms roll in towards each other. You should be able to wiggle the toes as you sit back into the heels. Legs are strong, glutes are strong and active. Last breath, sink an inch. Exhale, hands come down, keep the knees bent. As you climb the knees onto the triceps for Bhattasana. So your fingers will be your brakes here. If you've worked here before, you know right what to do. Otherwise, get the knees really, really high on the triceps almost into the armpits. Then start to find that shift forward. If you don't shift forward, you're not gonna find play. So shift forward, maybe lift one leg, maybe lift the other with time. Both toes float, we grip the mat with our fingers. And if you can, exhale, vinyasa. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha. Exhale, Adha Mukha. We move into the Virabhadrasanas. Pivot the left heel flat. Step the right foot forward, warrior one. Inhale, come on up. Palms touch, just like in Utkatasana, arms roll in towards each other. Front ribs are soft, low belly sucks in. Press through the back of the left knee and sink into the right. Last breath, sink an inch. Now straighten that right leg and turn all the way to the back of your mat. 
Now the left knee bends deeply. So for this pose, we should be about heel to heel in stance. Feel free to check with that, look down. And then Drishti goes back upward towards your hands. Anchor your tailbone down towards your back heel. We don't want to dump into our back. Sink an inch. Exhale, pivot open. Here we draw some letter B. Fix your feet because now we're heel to arch. Fingers are together. Spine is long, so we're not reaching into the left hand or the right. Shoulders are away from the ears. Palm, quiet, focus. Sink an inch. Exhale, now straighten that left leg and bend the right knee deeply. Drishti's past the tip of the right fingers. Last breath, sink an inch. Exhale, cartwheel the hands down. Push the floor away so you can step that right foot back without dragging it. Find downward dog for just a moment. And we're going to make our way to seated. So if you know how to jump through for seated, you're welcome to do so. I'm going to give a couple of tips. So like I said, we're actively pushing the floor away. We don't want to dump. The strength has to come from our shoulders and our arms. Glance forward, shift forward. Bring your right foot towards your left wrist, your left foot towards your right wrist, tops of the toes, and then shimmy the feet through, and then send them out, sit down. An alternate that, if you want to start jumping through with straight legs, a little bit harder, suck the low belly in. And what's most important if you're jumping through with straight legs is to think about getting your butt very low to the ground. We don't want to get way high but nice and low. Keep pushing out of the shoulders, keep scooping the low belly. So shift forward, bend the knees a little, get some momentum. And because I thought butt low the whole time, they slid right through. Dandasana, legs are straight out in front of you. Hands are just outside of the hips, pushing the floor away. Shoulder blades squeeze towards each other. Spine is long, feet flex back towards the face. Legs are all engaged, so maybe the heels lift. Pelvic floor lifts, low belly swoops. Seated staff pose. Very tough. Not this easy seated position that it looks like. Last breath. Now hinging at the hips, reach forward, hook the big toes with the first two fingers and that yogi toe hold. Maybe rocking from side to side, release the flesh of your glutes. And then exhale, fold. Again, we want the elbows in towards the legs, not way out by the sides where we're making the shoulders work. But the shoulders are relaxed and away from the ears. Legs are active. Drishti's towards the big toes. Now, if you can't reach your toes, no worries. You can grab your shins, sides of your feet. You can use a strap, whatever you'd like. Every inhale, we lengthen. Every exhale, we deepen. Drishti's towards the big toes, but don't strain your neck. Last breath. Inhale, halfway. Exhale. Inhale, rise up the rest of the way. And we'll move right into Purvasanasana. So bring your hands a couple inches behind your glutes. Broaden your chest. Shoulder blades squeeze again. Legs are active and push the floor away. Purvalottanasana. Now you can always take reverse table with the knees bent and then dropping the head back if that makes sense for you. Drive the big toes down. Calves are active. One more breath. Exhale, lower down, nice and easy. Draw your knees 
in, cross your ankles. We're gonna bump up and send our feet back to Vinyasana. If this is too much and you're really, really heated, feel free to just stay seated and just stay internally focused. But if we wanna keep heat in the body, we Vinyasa. So draw them in, squeeze it really tight, push the floor away, shift forward, crawl the feet through till you can, send them back. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing. Come back through to seated. And then we're gonna move right into the Janashasana. So bend that right knee, let it fall open to the side. Right foot comes high on the inner left thigh. Rotate your sternum over that left leg, and then fold. Try to keep that left leg straight, toes flexed back towards the face. Remember that we're rotating our chest so that we're over the left leg and not to the middle of the legs. One more breath here. Inhale, halfway. Exhale. Inhale, rise up the rest of the way. Draw that right knee in and straighten it out. And left side. Draw the left knee in, let it fall open to the side. I like to bring my heel high up toward the pubic bone. If that doesn't feel good for you, you don't need to do that. Anytime we feel pain or pinching on that inner knee, we back away from that. We don't want to stress the knees in Ashtanga. And then fold over that straight right leg. Keep that femur bone of the straight leg pulling back into the hip socket, pressing through the heel. Again, we're lifting the rib cage away from the pelvis. So we can go over this leg with a long torso. Inhale, halfway, exhale. Inhale, rise up the rest of the way. Draw both knees in and bump up vinyasa if that's your jam. Coming back through to seated. We'll do two of the Marichasanas. Letter A and letter C, skipping bones with the half lotus. Again, draw that right knee in. Right foot is about a hand's width from the left inner thigh. Now bring that right shoulder deep inside the right knee. Squeeze the right knee in towards the body. Reach through that right arm and then thumb down. Swim the arm around the shin. And see if you can grab the left wrist. If that is not going to happen for you, no worries. We can grab the sides of our leggings, even better. Push the floor away. Or grab a strap, towel, tie, whatever you got. Wherever you are, push that right shin back. That's what we're really looking for as we fold over this left leg. We really want that deep compression, that deep flexion of the right hip. So use the strength of the right arm push that right leg back. Now the right hip's going to come up off the ground as you fold over this left leg. But still think grounding that right hip bone down as much as you can. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, release the bind. Inhale, rise up the rest of the way. And switch sides, straighten the right leg. Bend that left knee deeply. A little room between the foot and the inner thigh. Bring the left shoulder deep inside the left knee. Maybe even grab onto that foot to pull yourself in if you need help. And then reach, flip the hand so the palm is away. Swim it around your shin. Catch your bind. Remember the wrapper is the grabber. So because this arm wraps, the left arm wraps, it grabs the right wrist. And then you find whatever bind you have or push the floor away, get that deep hip flexion. And then fold over that right leg chin towards chin, not the crown of our head. Last breath. Inhale halfway, exhale. 
Inhale, rise up the rest of the way and vinyasa if you'd like to. Or just give yourself that bump up or stay seated and breathe. When we vinyasa, we don't stay in downward facing. We come right back to wherever we were. In this case, Marachasana C. Again, we bend the right knee. A little bit of room between the foot and the left inner thigh. Right hand comes back behind you for balance. Swing your ribs around, left elbow to the outside of the right knee. Now this is perfect. Keep that left foot engaged and flexed. Spine is tall, chest is open. And look gently over your right shoulder. If you would like to catch the bind, feel free. It's not necessary though. If you do bind, make sure that it doesn't close your heart space. Sit up nice and tall. Last breath. As you inhale, come back through center. Straighten out that right leg and the second side. Left hand comes behind you. Draw the right ribs towards that right leg. So the right elbow is on the outside of the left knee. And then gently look over your left shoulder. Heart is open. Right leg is engaged. Now, like I mentioned before, sometimes when we bind, we have to really close things up in order to get the bind. If this is what happens, don't bind. Stay here, open your heart. But if you can wrap your arm around and still keep your chest open, then feel free to bind. We don't ever want to close the heart space. Last breath. Inhale, come back through center. Exhale, straighten out the left leg, and vinyasa. We'll be moving right into Navasana. So come through, sit down, draw your knees in. Give yourself a good squeeze so you can lift your toes up off the mat. Find that place where you balance pretty easily. And when you're ready, three Navasanas. Inhale, float the toes and reach the arms. And breathe. Now it doesn't matter if your boat has to have bent legs or if you have to hold on, but sit up as straight as you can. Suck that low belly in. Do your best, last breath. Okay, draw the knees in, bump up. Maybe your feet never touch the ground. Second set. One. It's about three. Halfway. Low belly sucks. Chest lifts. And five. Again. Cross the ankles. Bump up. Last set. You got it. Everybody shakes here. Everybody wobbles, no worries. And you stay calm in chaos. Two more breaths. See if you can float the toes up an inch. Maybe you can straighten the legs, you got it. Nice lower the ankles down to the ground, cross them, knees come in. Push the floor away, send it back. And really enjoy this upward facing dog. More Cobra. And stretch out your hip flexors. Nice downward facing. Coming back through a seated Vadakanasana. Soles of the feet come together. Even more so, the pinky toe sides of the feet. And then we want to peel the feet open. So they're close to the body and the feet open up like a book. This will allow, see when my feet are together, my knees come up. When I peel the feet open, that naturally externally rotates the hips, which is what we're looking for here. We're not looking to just cram the knees down no matter what. We want the hips to open. Lift the pelvic floor, suck low belly in, and then start to fold over your legs. 
Try to do so with a straight spine, calm mind. One more breath. Inhale, come up through center, exhale. And Vavishta Konasana, the sister pose, but now the legs are wide. Feet flex back towards the face. So there's options. You can reach the sides of your feet. That's what we'd like you to do. Otherwise, hook the big toes, grab your shins, or if it's really accessible, elbows down, and just rest on your forearms. Now, if you can put the sides of your feet, first we work on getting the forehead down. Once the forehead goes down, then try to get the chin down. Once you get the chin down, then heart. Get the heart down. And breathe. Inhale as you rise up through center, release the feet, but keep the arms reaching out at the same angle. We're going to find letter B. So now we have to round through the spine, sit back under the hip bones, let the feet float up, and go ahead and grab the sides of your feet. Now this time, instead of flexing the feet, point the toes and look up. Letter B, Uvavishta Konasana, letter B. Kind of like Navasana, but we get to grab the feet. Very nice, one more breath. Now draw the knees in, cross the ankles, give that bump up, send them back, up dog, and down dog. Very nice. So that was it for the actual Ashtanga part, the, the standing sequences, the seated sequences. Now we're going to move into the closing postures. So let's come all the way down onto our back. If you work in bridge pose, that's where you're going to stay. If you'd like to take work without your asana, wheel pose, you can do that. We're going to do two back bends. So maybe we start with bridge, shoulder blades down and together. Knees are bent, feet are just outside the hip bones. And then we push the floor away, lift the hips, let the chest rise up to the chin. Try very hard not to Turn your head from side to side here, as touching as it may be, but just keep your neck nice and long and neutral. Squeeze your glutes, strong active legs. Push a little more and exhale, lower down. Now I'll take wheel pose for my second. You feel free to take bridge again. If you're working in Urban Anurasana, hands are just outside of the ears. Elbows squeeze in towards each other. Strong legs, strong glutes, and push the floor away. Coming all the way up into your back bend. Now, it's tempting to want to come up under the toes, and that's okay, especially if you need space for the knees. But try to keep the feet grounded. Really strong glutes, really strong legs. Feel like you're opening the armpits. Chest is broad. And let your breath be very calm here. One more. Exhale. Lower all the way down. Front bridge or wheel. Draw your knees in. Give yourself that good squeeze. Very nice. So if you were just in bridge pose, maybe a happy baby pose right here. For those of us in Urbhadanyarasana, rock forward. Fold over your legs. Pashimottanasana. We always fold after opening up our heart, especially in those deeper postures like Urvadhanyarasana. This time it doesn't have to be so perfect. Just fold over your legs, make it feel good. After opening up the nervous system, we want to try to close it back down so we don't leave our practice feeling rattled. Just awakened, invigorated, calm, not frazzled. All right. So let's vinyasa here. Draw the ankles in. Bump up. And send them back. 
Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing. Oh, and coming back through to seated. Coming on to our back swings again. If you work in Salama Sarvangasana, that supported shoulder stand, that's where we're gonna go. But if that's not in your practice, no worries. Lay on your back, hinge at your hips, feet flex, facing towards the ceiling. Viparita Karani. It's even a nice place to start if you are going to Salama Sarvangasana. Shoulder blades are tucked underneath you. And we lift the hips, bring the hands to the low back, giving ourselves support. Legs reach up towards the ceiling, squeezing towards each other. Try to get the elbows in towards each other as close as you can. Walking the hands up the back for more support. And then again, lengthen the throat and the neck and breathe. Two more breaths. And exhaling into Halasana. Toes come up and overhead. Maybe the hands stay at the low back. Or maybe you can interlace your hands. Pinkies down. And then think about lengthening your spine. So instead of rounding and dumping, get long, lengthen, create space for your neck. Point the toes back behind you. And don't worry if your toes don't touch the ground. That's just about the space that you have in your neck and in your upper back. So please don't force and cram. Now flip the palms down. Prepare for Matsyasana. Slowly rolling out one vertebrae at a time until we're sitting on the tops of the hands. Palms down. We scoot up so you can see. So palms down, sitting right on them, toes point, we're resting on the forearms and the elbows, and then we drop the head back by blue, opening up the throat, opening up the heart. One more breath. Slowly coming off of your hands. Nice and easy down onto your back. Draw your knees in. Give yourself a good squeeze. Maybe rocking a little from side to side. And then forward and back, making your way up to seated. <clears throat> so if you work in lotus at all, Feel free to take the lotus legs or half lotus. So half lotus, we start with the right leg. And we bring that right foot high, high up on the left groin. Now if you work in full lotus, then the left foot will join. And no worries, you can always sit in Sukhasana, easy crisscross applesauce. And I want you to bring the pointer finger and the thumb to touch. Straighten out the arms. Other three fingers touch and reach out straight. Sit up really tall, low belly pulls in, pelvic floor lifts, chin gently drops, and I want you to breathe nice and calm. Inhale. Pause. Exhale. Inhale. Pause. Exhale. Again. Inhaling. Hold at the top. Exhaling. Two more times. Inhale. Hold. Exhaling. Last one, inhale. And exhale. Now hands 
come just outside of the hips and slightly forward, prepare to put with the A lot easier if you are in any form of um, Padmasana, Lotus Pose, but we can do it in Supasana as well. So lift up the legs, push the floor away. It might feel like we're a foot off the ground or probably more like one to two inches, but we work, we push. Try, try, try. Otherwise, nothing shifts, nothing changes. Last breath. Exhale, lower down. Very nice. Now, unwrap the legs from lotus. Let the knees bend. Nice and easy, work your way down onto your back. Shoulder blades gently tuck underneath you. Palms open up towards the sky. Straighten out the legs. Let the feet flop. And take rest. Stay here for three, four, five minutes, ten, fall asleep. Let your breath return to nature's pace. Let your heart rate slow to its natural rhythm. Find calm. Rest peacefully. Feel free to reach over, hit pause on this video and stay as long as you'd like. Once you're ready to move again, draw your knees in, give yourself that little squeeze. And then the knees pass over to the right, arms open like a T. Gently turn your head towards the left, a deep sigh of breath in. Exhale out your mouth. Squeeze the legs towards each other, come through center. Let them pass over to the left this time. Drishti towards the right, again, in through your mouth, out of your mouth. Then let that right arm come over to the left, curl it upon yourself, take one more moment for stillness, reconnecting with that intention. Knowing with full faith, it's on its way back to you. And nice and easy using your top hand. Help yourself up to a seated position. Nice and easy crossing your legs sitting down. Bring your hands to your heart. Gently drop your head in. Close your eyes. Thank you so much, yogis, for joining me in your Ashtanga short form practice such a nice way to calm the mind, soothe the body and the nerves, bring peace once again. You can always, always come back to your practice, come back to your mat, come back to your breath. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. May there be peace for all beings, no exceptions. Namaste. See you soon.